Everybody's here for once. Holy crap. I'm surprised. By the way, by the way Mike, I forgot to mention this uh, in the last recording, but did you notice that throughout the whole time during that Oscars episode, not once did it break? No. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, I did notice that afterwards. I was like, Skype did not, or my Wi-Fi did not break it up at all. It's, so it gets on two and two, it's better than a four-way. I guess. It's still like, holy crap. <laughs> when was the last time that that happened? It's rare. It's rare occasions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, yes. Donuts. I envy you already. Who has donuts? Oh, hello, nope. James. <laughs> hey, Matt. I didn't know you were there. Um, <laughs> you didn't know I was here? <laughs> Being sarcastic. Uh, I could just imagine it's like you come out of like some kind of flower pot. It's like, does somebody say donuts? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. So, just to recap, um, this episode will be all about Dr. Seuss and the adaptations of his books to film. And I totally forgot about this until I went through the archives of vaulting um, more, that one Dr. Seuss film that Morgan might bring up during this episode. Meep, meep. Otherwise, yeah, it's that. Oh. Yeah. I think I know which one it is, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I totally forgot about that during two weeks ago. I was like, oh my gosh. S speak of the devil, I wonder if you guys have actually seen the episode. I know James has. I've seen uh, the episode. I actually have seen it. It's the one, it's the one where, um... Uh, the um, I forgot his the guy's name, but the one who played Captain Hook, Hans like Conrad. He's in there, right? Yes. Yeah, we all seen the episode. Yeah, I remember the I remember all the jokes that you did like with him as Captain Hook when he would <laughs> lose. I'll get you for this pad if it's the last it's thing nice. I do. Originally, I was gonna have him say Smee, but for some weird reason, <laughs> it didn't come out that right. I actually showed the clip to James, and he said, "Is he saying free?" <laughs> so I thought, "Oh, I they might as well go with joke number two because it makes sense because there's kids around there." Yeah. Yeah. They also, could it be saying me or something? I don't know. Me. Yeah. Well, there was a musical number that they sadly cut out where he does mention his favorite note is me, do re mi. Oh yeah. Which would have been perfect, but... It's me! <laughs> My favorite note is me, me, me. <laughs> I would like to see that, like, the recruitment. I was like, what's your name? My name is Shmi. I like the sound of that. You're hired. <laughs> Where My goodness, does he get you do those, those amazing voices? voices? You, you, you do those voices way too well. <laughs> I, am stuck with Billy I, never, I never thought that I did a good... I, I just realized I don't think I have done a good Smee until just now. Like, usually... Uh. Well, well, <laughs> usually these characters, they have a very distinctive voice. <laughs> but, but, but I think now I got the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wonder. All right, well, you know what? I own Drupi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, oh, I can't do any more crap. I still you know have what? that. You know uh, what? I think you screw that up. <laughs> that makes me mad. <laughs> that makes me mad. <laughs> I can do Zoidberg, but I can't do Drupi. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time. 
Oh, hey, I'm useful again. <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> I don't really get this anymore. Are we doing Zoidberg? Are we doing Droopy? Are we doing Smee? Which one are we going with now? <laughs> <laughs> we just need a, a Dr. Honeydew to complete the picture, and I wish Mike uh, Kimpton was on because he's a really good Dr. Bunsen. Oh, that oh, that would be awesome. Here at Muppet Labs, we are pertaining to the best qualities imaginable. Consider today, every critics do not know exactly what kind of film to see these days. That's why we have the recommendation leader. I will demonstrate my assistant beaker. Oh, don't worry, this will. Oh, don't worry, this will be very, very harmless. <laughs> it's just like a giant sledgehammer beaming over his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And it'd be oh something God. like, Nothing. and then I was like, "Gee, mom, it's my life. If I want to go to live on the beach all day and walk around naked, <laughs> for sure, really." <laughs> In joke. Yeah. Uh, ah. <laughs> oh gosh. It was uh, the quote of the Sorry, day yesterday, actually. <laughs> You are all weirdos. <laughs> Ugh. I'm dying yeah. here. I'm dying. <laughs> oh, by the way, Morgan. So I guess um, you let. From what I remember on Facebook, you liked uh, Muppets Most Wanted. Uh, yeah, I was very surprised by it. I was a little worried at first because there's always that weird tingling in the back of my neck when I'm seeing family films alone. Because, yeah. you know that feeling where you're going in and there's a room full of kids and you have that weird suspicion you're like, should I be here or not be here? It, oh, it's, yeah. it's, sort of like, it's sort of that kind of thing. And I get the same thing, too, when I see them myself. It's, you know, awkward to say the least. But um, I liked it. I thought it was fun. The only problem I have is that it feels a little overstuffed in spots. Um mm. There, there, there's a couple of musical numbers they could have cut out or at least exchanged to a different way, like the interrogation scene. Um, yeah. That, that, that could have worked so much better, like an Abbott Costello kind of routine, which would have been perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, constant, uh, I like the villain. He was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. Ricky Gervais was a nice surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it worked pretty well. I kind of wish they had a little more of Kermit in the prison. That seemed like it was building up somewhere, and there were some pretty good jokes, but... I honestly didn't, didn't like Kermit in the prison. It, it was a little too depressing. I, I don't know. know. Uh, I mean, seeing him in the previous movie all depressed was more depressing than him being in a prison, trying to survive and being depressing is a little more out there. Yeah, but still, it, I, I mean, it's not very much it's not very Merry Muppet Christmas depressing, but still, you know, it's kind of, no, it's kind of a downer. No, 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 no. <laughs> Muppets Wizard of Oz is far more depressing. No. Oh. Okay, oh, the well, pop okay, culture yeah, influ- but... What was with the Quentin Tarantino cameo? Honestly. <laughs> and, and the Sherlock yes. Osborne thing, really. Yes, that, I was like, if what? You had the D- if you, if you have oh, the yeah. DVD, they have a bit where Sharon Osborne comes out instead of, uh, what's her name there? Uh, but no, yeah, sure it was, uh, but yeah, it was, I, it was a good installment. Um, it, it's they, not that bad, but no, it, it's no great Muppet caper, but it, it's mm-hmm. up there. There's some pretty good jokes like Gonzo's hey. indoor running of the bulls. <laughs> yeah, no, the, <laughs> no, my personal favorite has to be Rizzo. It's, um, when they were talking about like, the one that Stefan said on Facebook, the one oh, where, yeah, like, with the, they're establishing yeah, with Rizzo, was like, principal characters as opposed to characters that don't mean anything today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we even had to sacrifice. Yeah, we even had to sacrifice some Muppets to his extent. Nah, come on, Robin. Yeah, all right. Oh, my goodness. You should have been in the theater I was in. When it got to that scene, everybody sighed. Everybody in the in the whole theater, at least the adults, are like, "Oh, what oh, happened?" Really? <laughs> it was really sad. I'm not even joking. There, there, there was a lot of adults <laughs> there that really laughed at a lot of spots. 
<laughs> and I had some pretty good reactions too, but when we got to that one moment, the entire theater just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it was Rocky. terrible. <laughs> and if you saw my rebuttal on Facebook, it was like, they should yeah. not have sidelined Robin. He died for our sins in the Great Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, it's more depressing. It, it gets even more depressing when you do realize, if you go back and see the Muppets Celebrate Jim Henson special, near the end, Robin is the reason why they actually get their spirits lifted up so that it makes even more terrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> but no, um, I thought it was a fair uh, fair installment, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And it, it's certainly better than Cloudy 2. They literally took leftovers and reheated them with legs. Anything's better than Cloudy 2. Sweet Anything about? is better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There, when we saw that movie, I am not. Even, uh, I, I want to give away what we did, but I, I don't want to ruin it. No, don't, 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 don't. Are you doing it just as a pro- like a video project? What? Well, let, let me put it this way: I was, I was watching, I was watching Morgan while we were, you know, webcamming each other, and I've, I've never mm-hmm. seen him do this, but he ran, he, he ran off during what? the movie. There, there was right. one joke I couldn't take. There, there was one joke really near the end I couldn't take. It was, ugh. Mm-hmm. What was it? Oh, fudge, holy guacamole. No, no, I could survive th- that kind of stuff. Uh, it was during the AE, the end credits, and they had a corn version of Conan O'Brien. I could not take it anymore. It was like, really? Oh. Is it during the credits? I think yeah. I missed that. Yeah, that was that was when I really lost it. I was like, okay, we've gone from food puns to pop culture celebrity jokes. This is, you know, <laughs> DreamWorks I can handle. The, the, the douchiness of Jerry, Jeffrey Kratzenberg to a degree. Corny jokes about celebrities I have uh, influence and appreciation for. That is where I draw the line with you, movie. Enough is enough. I was like, no, oh just, God! No. Like, no. It, it was like uh, late night with Corn and O'Brien or something like that. Was, ugh. I'm glad mm-hmm. that I that I stormed off the theater right right when the credits started. It's like, I'm out. I'm done. Okay, movie's done. I'm out. Screw this thing. Time to do my review and smash the hell until it's dead. I I can imagine what it must have might Screw have been. Screw this movie. Like, I'm going home. It, it, it might have been just like you're just sitting in the theater, and the minute you see directed by so and so, you would just immediately jump in your chair and just run all the way to your car and don't look back. Yeah, so, pretty so, much. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. You know, Keep swimming, Betty. Don't look back. <laughs> oh god, Ugh. Ugh. painful memories, man. Uh, I still love. Next... Uh, well, I uh, think I'm glad. I think it's nice to know that. I think. There might not be any more cloudy films after. Let's hope not. Let's hope. No, not. definitely not because like the Smurfs two was did uh, much more successfully than Cloudy two. So, <laughs> like they got... I've heard rumors they're actually gonna do a third one. Um. No. They can't. No. No. They're not. They're doing a whole reboot of the Smurfs. It's the original. It's all animated story. now. Oh yeah. Oh, you're talking about the Smurfs. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It's for sure that they're doing a reboot of the Smurfs. So. Yeah, it's totally fresh. Not, it's not the previous movies. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how that's going to be. Yeah. I'm, I am. Because at I least mean, with, the Sims, with the Smurfs, they're making a movie. Like hmm. this, like even though it was, it's crap as all hell, at least they're movies and like their animation is actually good in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's part of the problem, I guess. They put, they might have a lot of effort put into them, but the stories are weak. It's they had just to throw basic. in, they had to throw Definitely, in ACDC man. to try and save it. And it's more than just CG. It's pretty much just the scripts in general. I mean, legitimately, there's a joke with Grouchy Smurf going to a thing and a blue M and M's and. 
going like, "Ew, Smurf droppings!" eats a bit, and they're delicious. Aif, ugh. And then having a romance with the green M and M of all things. Uh. Yeah, but at least uh, Hank Azaria, like, say, like, at least made it tolerable. He was he. Mm. he uh, like, despite the movie being bad, he was fantastic. Like, like, yeah, I'll give him that. I mean, he does look at oh, he yeah. tries to get the mannerisms, but I don't know. When I see him, he looks like a buck tooth version of Jacques Clouseau for some reason. But he's, he's still <laughs> funny, but still. He was actually... He puts on you know, the character, and, and that's the thing. The that was the big thing, is that... That was the Go big on. thing, I guess, is that, is that Hank... It, Gargamel and Azrael were the mm. two only characters that they got right. And, and they were the bad guys. And, and... They are the bad guys. <laughs> Why? <laughs> that's like making that's like if they made the that's like if they made the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie and they just got Boris and Natasha right, but Rocky and Bullwinkle were uh hippies from the sixties or something like that. Oh you, god, yeah. You you might want to. I wanna... was almost get, you know I was thinking of the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie, and I was pretty much gonna say it's like you know, you know I I didn't mind that much Boris and Natasha there like hmm. they were they were not that bad. Oh, I'm cartoon no more. <laughs> yes, I am cartoon no more. Are you talking to me? Uh, <laughs> uh, funny thing. Yes, we are actually... talking to you now. Shut up. <laughs> 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 Write that down. We got to use that in one of the episodes. <laughs> Moments like this go by us. Uh huh. No. Um, yeah. Sad story. There was a Rocky and Bullwinkle movie before the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. Yeah, it was called Boris and Natasha. Boris and Natasha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Never saw it. I only like bits and pieces on HBO Family, and that was it. Yeah, I never heard. Yeah, I never saw it either. Like uh, when I made the top ten uh, worst uh, films based on the cartoons, I tried looking for Boris and Natasha, but I couldn't even find it. Yeah, I'm the researcher to go to for obscure things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember the hardest thing, the hardest movie I had to find was freaking Mr. Magoo. <laughs> it, was, it was really hard. I tried searching everywhere and stuff like that, and then I finally found it. And I think I was so mad at it because, like, it wasn't funny, but also the fact that it's like, I ended up searching for days for, like, I ended up searching for days for this? <laughs> oh, well, don't mm-hmm. look at this over here. It's a download of My Divid goodness, or something. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, I CD waited here. Days it doesn't play music. Leslie Nielsen in a bride's dress flying with her <laughs> like, <rat. laughs> Over Niagara Over Falls. Over a freaking waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> it looked good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine they made the movie based on that. We need uh, we need something where Leslie Nielsen is in a bride's dress and is flying is flying with a raft over a waterfall. What can we do? We just got the rice for Mr. Magoo. Perfect. We'll do that. We'll have him get chased around by uh, Peter Dinklage in a baboon outfit. Brilliant. Oh, God. (laughs) You're kidding about that, right? I hope so. What? Oh. Peter Dinklage? Was that Peter Dinklage? I don't know. I I really don't know. I'll have to look that up now. Well, the baboon outfit (laughs) really Mm. happened. That I know. Let's uh, see here. Uh, speak of the devil, I'm not watching Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Just throwing it out there. Uh, no, his filmography says he wasn't in Mr. Magoo, so... Mm. Mm. Though he wasn't a Seinfeld episode. Oh, it was a voice. Although Peter Dink... Isn't Peter... Well, technically, Peter Dinklage did voice a monkey in... Uh... In Ice Age 4. He was the yeah, monkey pilot in Ice Age 4, yeah. so that counts. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the orangutan. Yeah. The, yeah, Ice Age. 
I stage four. I actually did sit down and watch that, and I said, wow, this... Uh, it's a ripoff of Ice Age 2. They've lost reason to exist. <laughs> it's... It's, a, it's literally a ripoff of Ice Age 2, but now they add in pirates. Yeah. And, and okay, I bought, I bought the pirates, but sirens... <laughs> Think about oh, that. Yeah. We're we're now we're now traveling into fantasy territory with these stories. I guess, I guess is what usually happens with um, movie franchises when they reach to their fourth film, they just don't care anymore and they go literally insane. Look at pirates. Look at Transformers right now, and look mm. at Ice Age. They've gone well, nuts. Well, when you mean look at Transformers, you mean the Michael Bay years with Shia LaBeouf or the upcoming, oh my goodness, Optimus Prime is riding on a dinosaur, buy me that. Yeah, I that will. one. Yeah. Oh, right. That looks that amazing, one. actually. Yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, but still, <laughs> it's like... It's probably going to be the better Transformer films, in my opinion. Well, the Dinobots well, yeah, were part Michael... of the cartoon. Marky Mark. Gridlock. Mark that Wahlberg. Yeah, like, you never think that, like, when the first Transformers came out, you, you didn't sit there and think, you know what this movie needs? Dinosaurs. Optimus Prime should be riding a dinosaur. Well, they were in the cartoon. I don't know. <laughs> Watch the cartoon, Matt, for Christ. Google search Dinobots. That's all I need to say. Right. For someone who compiled a list about top ten films that were based off of cartoons, I'm surprised you had no idea they had dinosaur bots in Transformers, the cartoon from the 80s. <laughs> Good point. Good point. I only watched Beast Wars. Give, cut me some slack. It makes so much sense now. <laughs> I watched Beach Wars as a kid in my day, but that didn't stop me from knowing they were goddamn dinosaurs and Transformers. <laughs> I thought Transformers were just Transformers. And all this time, I was just sort of thinking, okay, with Transformers 4, they were thinking, uh, what, what are we going to do now? Hey, that Pacific Rim movie actually did something good that we did not. Let's choose that. <laughs> Oh, and Godzilla just can't wait to tear up the world. Hey. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, well, did you see start the podcast? Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. We never did. You guys started a whole conversation after another and after another. Please tell me we're recording this. I Please am. Tell. I am. <laughs> Our children must hear um, this. It's a Bonus episode. Oh, we lost Matt. Canadians, oh. Canadians. Look at that. There you go. Now you guys got the attention of. Let's do the podcast now. We got the attention of the grit of the glitch gremlin. I have glitches in me glitches. <laughs> Hi. Good day, do you nerd? <laughs> Good day. What's going on here? Why don't you just blow me? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, James, we picked the wrong week to watch Derby Gill and the Little People. <laughs> <laughs> Darby, you missed your fourth wish. <laughs> what? Are you are you adding in the glitch gremlin to Darby O'Gill now? <laughs> Oh, oh God! God. <laughs> oh, this is the great crossover moment. This, this Are you is still a, recording. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, mm. now I'm just imagining okay, that, that scene, like when when they're slowly, like, like I think Darby O'Gill or something is slowly like entering the door, and then suddenly the banshee would come out. But instead of the banshee, yeah. is the glitch gremlin. It's like, ah, oh, good day, Peter. Good day. Good day, dear Dabby. It seems your daughter's not working very well. I'll give it a good working on right to do. Just let me in the room. <laughs> Here we hey, have dear, Iron Mike Tyson. Soul. We have definitely ironed his face. <laughs> uh, we might as well get this thing started, otherwise we're going to keep jarbing. We would be doing this all night. <laughs> 
Today's <laughs> special episode of Cinema Royale, random movie crap. No theme specifically. <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> All right. With, With your guest star, Torgo, oh, yeah, from Man of the Hands of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few words to say about Alf and his treatment in today's <laughs> Hollywood. God damn you guys. <laughs> we are killing Mike. <laughs> Slowly. Uh, this is the second Mike I've killed this week. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh. Oh God! Okay, I never laughed so hard in my life. <coughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. We roll in five, four, <sighs> three, two, one. <laughs> you know you like the Swedish chef. <laughs> and the Swedish chef. <laughs> Stop badgering around, woman! Can't you see I'm trying to live a life my own? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You oh, bored. man, it is. Hey, you haven't seen the Swedish chef making puts in live. Oh, uh, yeah. How was that, by the way? What? The, oh, the, uh, the, the... Yeah. Oh, the live show? It was amazing. It's a real... It's a live Muppet show. Hmm. It was a freaking live Muppet show. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, de- yeah. Well, like, some of the comedians, they were all right, but it was mostly the Muppets. Plus the fact mm. that they ended off by singing Rainbow Connection, and I actually I actually teared up. Aw, you're not the only one. Every time I hear that song, it's just like, wow, mission accomplished, Jim, this is for you. Yeah, but like this that was live. Like mm. imagine seeing the actual Muppets singing Rainbow Connection live. Oh my god. It's glorious. Yeah. Oh my Fangasm. god. It was beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Literally. Mm. They actually <laughs> and they actually started it off with the intro. It was like da, 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 and like with the bleachers and everything. I was like I wanted to do like a standing ovation when I first see them, but that was like, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> oh my God. Okay, is the recording over? By the way. Yes. By the way, what was your cloudy con- like? What, what what did you guys mean on your cloudy controversy? Was it just the whole episode of Front Pages to Pictures, or or was it is- just one part? Well, there was a time when doing my show, I always thought it's funny to get angry. And then after Mars Needs Mums, I realized it's not funny to be angry. Oh, okay, right. And even before then, some signs of that show in the cloudy episode, I can't remember whose idea was it to do that whole thing where I go so mad to the point I make the DVD disappear. Was that your end or my end? That was my idea. Because yeah. I know the... The baby bread explosion was mine, so that was one yeah. of them. I am God. <laughs> <laughs> See, something good did come out of that episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Morgan discovered that he was God. And it, all it takes is just looking and going, uh oh. <laughs> 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 but on the other uh, hand, every single so. character looks like it was done by a brain dead five year old, so. Yeah. I will never. I, I never have anything nice to say about Andy Samberg. Ugh. I don't know. Not like, even... I even saw, saw his. I, I even saw a bit of his new show, and he looks like a dick. Oh, God. Oh, God. Morgan. Morgan. Mm-hmm. You didn't see Hotel Transylvania, did you? He was annoying. Oh, that's it? <laughs> the rest of the movie had a clever concept. It was eh. okay with the humor. Then the last third kind of got weak. Save for one honestly, bashing joke. Honestly, was it was going... Until... 
Andy Samberg came in and like completely destroyed everything. Yeah. I'll give it this much. I can kind of tolerate it to a degree, but it's one of those movies you're not going to catch me seeing again anytime soon. Yeah. I think that's the better way to put at it. It's like, yeah, I'm glad I saw it and for what it was, it had this, it had that, but eh, I'll stick with better films. I'm really starting to go away from Columbia because some of the stuff they're cranking out really turns me off. Uh, Spider-Man 2? Ah! No, amazing Spider-Man 2. Don't get me started. There's nothing amazing about it. The only thing amazing about it is how... The only thing amazing about it is how his suit doesn't ride up his crotch. Ha! Ah! <laughs> I hated Andrew Garfield in the first one. And I really hated the first one. Yeah, same here. I mean, he, I mean, Andrew Garfield was a dick in there. Mm, and don't get me started with Uncle Ben. Good God, what did they do to him? Martin Sheen, what are you doing here? We need someone more resourceful and wise, not a douche. <laughs> this is what he's going to turn into. He's going to turn into a web-slinging douche. <laughs> I prefer I Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Thank you very much. Yeah, Hell same yeah. here. Hell yeah. I almost Sam see the douche he's chewing on when he talks. It has cheese. It has and beautiful, it... glorious cheese. And it doesn't help that my sister's boyfriend really likes The Amazing Spider-Man. He's Ooh. like, oh, it's it's just like the comics because the comics were like that. <laughs> and, and then, and no, his exact words. And then my sister's all like, that movie sucked ass. You liked that movie? I saw that in theaters and it was terrible. Ah! <laughs> so at least uh, someone is on my side. <laughs> Yes. Yes. We're all on your side. Don't worry. We're there. Yeah, we're for we're you. we're in this together. You know. Yeah. Except when we talk about the Lorax, then we're split. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's just one. Movie. That's just one movie. We yeah, got. But like, there's a thousand more out there to talk about. Hey, I actually ne- I actually didn't give the animat seal of garbage to the Lorax, so it's not I know. that no. bad. I know. Ugh. Can't wait to see what's going to happen when we get to the more obscure stuff I sent along the lines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, whenever well, they... Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens if I draw them. Mm. But first, now I have to go through the Animatrix, so... Oh, uh, you anybody do. see that? I, I have seen that. Line. How was it? Um, as a As a series of... Of extraneous stories, if you if you view it in in that context, uh, stories that happen within the realm, within the world of the Matrix, but outside of what happened in the films, uh, they they do let these uh, they do uh, interestingly expand upon. Uh, the universe and i think i think that the different directors they all uh each segment is is uh done by a different director and they all take their own creativity and in their own vision and try to to put it on the matrix which i think uh can turn some people off because Mm -hmm. no not not all of it's going to be quite the same some of it some of it is kind of weird but then uh they it, it's just a a well it it's a well thought out and well balanced look at say what would happen if uh if someone inside the inside the matrix who who stayed inside the matrix were to find out its glitches. Hmm. All right. So or... it's more it's meant more to expand on the matrix world. Mhm. All right. Yeah, the um the the film's cast of characters 
uh, Neo, Morpheus, Trinity, they all they all make their appearance and they're all played by the same actors. However, they're they're not prominent there. And they're not meant to be. Mm-hmm. I couldn't really so, imagine them being so Yeah, I never could get into the Matrix. Okay. I had to study it for school, so like I have a good at least I have a good understanding about it. Mm-hmm. So, so like I, I know every single thing. Like I saw the movie, like I had to study about like Plato's theory and all that stuff, so I'm good. And I still have a good view on on the movie since I, I didn't see the uh, t- the two sequels. Hmm. Mm. I I saw the two sequels. People complained way too much. Mm, maybe. Is the only thing I remember from the Animatrix that samurai sword fight scene in computer graphics? Yeah, that did. Uh, that did happen in the Animatrix. Uh, it's that like was one of many remember. things that happened in it. It's like the only thing I can remember, and I don't know why. Mm. You don't remember the, uh, you don't remember the jock who pushes himself too hard. Nope. Or the the girl that finds the house where, uh, where glitches are everywhere and stuff is disappearing and reappearing. Let me check. Nope, on the brain. Uh, what about the uh, film noir segment? Sin City? Nope. Exactly. Mm. And that's that. <laughs>